40% of our kids are living below the poverty level. I mean, you don't think about that in Berkeley, but that's really true. People talk about the achievement gap between rich and poor kids, which is often around ethnic demographic lines. Well, that's because those kids at the bottom of the barrel are being fed so poorly in many cases that they can't think and they can't learn in school. Are you ready for it? Okay. Listen, you want to close the achievement gap. You want your kids to be able to learn better. You want them to be able to think. You want less behavioral problems. You have to feed your kids well. We have kindergartners entering school in Berkeley with type 2 diabetes, 10-year-olds with kidney stones, 10 to 14-year-olds clogged arteries. You know what? We need a change. We need to change the way we feed our children. Basically, Alice Waters had this vision. You teach kids about nutrition. We talked about vitamin C. Before we eat it, we're going to read the ingredients. You teach them how to grow the food. And the other thing we're going to do to make the soil really healthy is we're going to mix in this compost. So I want you to... And then you teach them how to cook it and eat it. She's going to mix. She's going to juice. What we were trying to do is take Alice's vision and figure out a way that you could make it happen within the confines of school budgets. It's almost impossible in a bag lunch to give your kid better food than what they would get in the Berkeley schools. All of our students receive a free breakfast every morning regardless of their family income. The second part is the lunch. Students can either purchase the lunch or they can receive federal funding for free or reduced lunch which is 40 cents. Oh, when I got here, there was uh, five items on the menu. Chicken nuggets, grilled cheese sandwiches, extremo burritos, corn dogs, and pizza pockets. We went from there to no trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup, salad bars every school every day, universal breakfast every school every day, all whole grains, organic milk at lunch. The kids eat the food. We try to do a variety of food. I mean, we're doing a Moroccan chicken this year, and we're doing a, like a tandoori chicken with couscous. So we're definitely trying to, to switch things up a little bit and make the food interesting. OK, so, so maybe we need to put the, put the, uh, the pot pie back in the bread bowl. So this is your place to really give us your input. I mean, kids need a chance to develop a taste for something. You know, you, you serve it to them, and over time, they taste it five or six, seven times, and by the eighth time, you know what, they like it. All you gotta do is just open up your mind, open up your mouth. When I come to them, I don't bring my assumptions. I start from the basics in the beginning. What is this? I hope of an orange. What is this? I hope of a celery. Is this a fruit? Is this a vegetable? Let why. them tell me that first, because we assume they know, and they don't even know that. Y'all starting to recognize some of this stuff, too. I like them to smell food, I like them to taste the food, and I like them to touch the food. I'm glad. You know why it looks so good? Because it smells good. All right, y'all get one more. It's a magical thing that happens, starting with the garden, because there's nothing more magical than putting a seed in the ground, watering it and watching it, and come back a week later, and it's a little higher, and before you know it, you're putting it on your table. There's no, there's no greater magic than that to me. Children have a very sensitive BS meter. So if you tell them to eat nutritious food in the classroom and then give them garbage, they know that this is BS. It's just one small piece of turning them into cynical teenagers and cynical adults. Okay, here you go. Kids who get this food are, feel like they're respected. teach children about healthy food now because that loyalty will last them a lifetime and they'll pass it on to their children. And we could not be teaching them anything more important and that will serve them better for the rest of their lives. And frankly, it'll save this country billions of dollars in healthcare costs. So why everybody isn't on board, I just can't even imagine. But we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs>